Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Amy Broker tutorials and videos. Thank you so much for joining me. This one is so cool, you are absolutely going to love it. It's the result of a little bit of collaboration at, uh, at my YouTube channel and at my site, asxmarketwatch.com. And, um, and it's basically, from last week we posted a video which was how to, how to buy if you've got five consecutive trades above a moving average, exactly as we can see here, and sell if we've got five consecutive days um, below that moving average. Now, when I did it myself, I did have the um, I did do it the long way around um, because obviously I'm not a coder myself, but I do try and figure this stuff out, you know. And it's not too hard to figure out if you just give it a tiny little bit of time. But the best part about it was that um, that a few people came forward and showed me three easier ways to do it. Um, Maurice at YouTube, uh, he said another way of doing the five days above a moving average is um, is this code, and we'll go over this because I had to actually figure out how it worked, but once you get this, it is so cool. Um, and the credit he gave was to um, Cesar Alvarez. Cesar is one of the best of the best, and it just goes to show what happens when you put this in the hands of a professional instead of you know someone like myself who just tries to figure this stuff out. The other one came at my website. I'll show you why it's easier and why it works, and once you get this, it will change the way that you code yourself as well. Now, if I just pull up a blank sheet of paper here, we've got analysis and formula editor. The first thing I did, obviously, was just setting up the, the moving average. Now, I'm not going to go over it all again, obviously, but just to show you the difference, uh, this is the code that I myself put forward. And there you go. I mean, look at that. It takes up the whole screen. <laughs> And that's because I was doing it every single day, day by day, day, um, you know, separately. So I wanted to show you that because that's the contrast that we'll be using um, against the other great lines of code that that, um, that Maurice and Gordon have put forward themselves. So one thing almost all of the guys did was to actually set up um, a conditional piece of code. So in other words, moving average um, above, yeah, and that's just an array, you can call it anything you like. So that equals the close above the moving average, which is, uh, and that moving average, it can be 50 days, it can be 100 days, whatever you prefer. The moving average below um, that array, and again, you can call that anything you like, is, uh, is what happens, that equals when we've got the closing price less than our moving average, uh, which is the moving average of the last, you know, 50 days in this case. So when this one happens, uh, this returns a true result or a one result, and it's the same for this one. When it's below the moving average, it will return true um, for that particular piece of code. Now that's really important because the the next the next one that we're actually going to look at, we can call it buy signal two, and it actually uses the sum function. So in other words, we're adding we're adding things up. But what are we adding? We're actually adding up that array that we just set up, which would return true if it was above our moving average. So that's our array there, and we want to add those together when they're true. So all of those ones will be added together. Now, the, the range, obviously it would be over the last five bars, or five days. So you could change that to any amount of days that you wanted, but just to keep this example the same, um, we want that to be you know, summed over the last five bars. Now, it's over the last five bars, but we also want it to equal, now if we're testing for equality, then we use two equal signs and we want it to equal five. So in other words, when it adds them all together and it's over the last five days, then we want it to be above that moving average for the last five days, so it should equal five. How cool is that? Now obviously it's the same for the sell signal for that one as well. Let's check out the next one. It's a buy signal, we'll call it buy signal three, just to keep things very, very simple. Now this one actually took me a little bit of, uh, of time to get because I'm a little bit slow on the uptake, but now that I've got it, I can explain it to you guys. And it uses our same arrays here, so that are returning true and false, um, true when they happen and false when they don't happen. And so that's one when it happens and zero when it doesn't happen. Now, what we've got here is using our lowest low value or LLV. I have done another video on this um, you know, previously, but uh, just to give you a quick rundown, it's the lowest low value of a certain array. So let's choose that array that we set up again. 
and over the last um, you know, X amount of periods or X amount of time. And so we'll be looking at the last five bars again. Now, what does this actually do? Uh, you guys have probably already got it, but what I usually use um, lowest low value or highest high value for is to, to do like a trailing stop or a, you know, a, a buy stop on the, on the stock. So using it on the stock price itself, I've never actually used it on a conditional array before. So what this is doing now, remember, remember how it returns one or zero, now it's returning the lowest value of the last five days of this particular array. So if it closes above the moving average, it returns one, then it does it again, it returns one. However, this is the, the really genius part. If there's any zeros in there, so if there's any false parts, or if it hasn't closed above our moving average, um, then it's returning the lowest low value, so it's going to return that zero. In other words, it returns zero, which is false, which means that we won't get a signal. So I thought that was really, really cool and really tricky as well. And again, it just goes to show what happens when you put this in the hands of professionals. Um, these guys are, you know, they're really quick, they're intelligent, and they're, you know, they're smart, and they obviously love what they do, and it really, really shows. The last one, let's check it out. We'll call it Buy Signal 4, of course. Now, this one is, um, is a little bit different. This one we're looking at bars since. Now when we open up bars since, it, tell, it looks for our array. Now, what we want is when the closing price crosses above our moving av, or moving average. So that's the moving average that we set up way, ba way back at the beginning. It's just the closing uh, price of the last 50 days, the moving average. And so we want it to look for the, the bars since it crossed above that moving average. Now the real beauty about this is that it actually resets every time it crosses above that moving average. So here's the thing, you know, it took me a little bit of time to figure out, obviously because I'm a little bit slow, but once I got it, I really, really got it. And I was, I was so excited for how this actually worked because every time it closes above that moving average, it's actually going to reset. And again, we're testing for the actual value here. So we're using two equal signs. Now we want it to have crossed above that moving average, um, you know, four days ago. And then we want the closing price to be greater than our moving average as well. So we've got to cross above um, four days ago. And as I said, it resets every time. So it's guaranteed if it, if it goes down again, then it's going to reset when it goes back up. And then on the fifth day, obviously, our closing price above that moving average again. And that is the third way that these guys um, showed me at the website and at YouTube. I cannot thank you enough. I think your work is absolutely fantastic. Um, guys, also stop by Cesar Alvarez's website. Um, his work is absolutely brilliant. I think it's Al uh, Quant Alvarez or Alvarez Quant com something similar to that do a quick google search um, and he is an absolute stand-up guy he's done a few podcasts really really highly recommend and i'm so glad to have been able to to have had that input from you guys on youtube and at asxmarketwatch.com i know it's actually helped my personal coding and i'll definitely be using this in the future as well have a great week and happy trending until we meet again bye for now